today I'll be talking about some tips and tricks in report designer, especially for sub reports. What will be covered is sub report inline versus banded, page of pages function, parameters to sub reports, so like how to use parameters to the sub reports, and how to include comments in reports. I'll just open a new report. Um, sub reports are always attached. A sub report is a report that is executed inside of another report. Uh, so this is the main layout page we have. And in the left hand side, you can see the tool set. And this is a sub report icon. We can define the data set in here. A sub report is always attached to a particular band and are executed and printed whenever that particular band is executed. We can place a sub report in the report header, report footer, group header, group footer, and in the no data band. If we place a sub report in report header and report footer or no data band, they will be executed once in the lifetime of the report. But if you are placing in the group header and group footer, they will be executed once for every time the group header and footer are going to be executed. And if we place the sub-report in the details or item band, it will be executed once for each row of data in the main report. Now let's talk a bit more detail about inline and banded. So when we drag the report to use a sub report, we can see that it asks for whether we want inline or banded. So if I click on inline, it says that uh, this report has to be in the exact size uh, in the report. And it will take up exactly as much space as I'm defining in the report. And the position of the and the position of the sub report matters as well. So in this case, the sub report data will be displayed exactly at this position in the main report. And it will take up exactly this much size. If we know exactly how exact, uh, if we know exactly how much data is returned from the sub report, then we can go for using the inline report, inline sub report. And if I select another one, and I take banded. If we know exactly, the sub, if we know that the sub report will span the whole width of the page, we can use a banded sub report. A banded sub-report is more useful when we do not know the size of the data that the sub-report will, uh, will return. So a sub-report, the banded sub-report will dynamically grow in size depending on the data. So if we have two sub-reports close by each other, banded sub-reports close by each other, only, one, only once all the data of the first report is shown completely, the, second, the data from the second sub-report will be shown. But in the case of uh, inline report, we can place the sub report anywhere we want in the report. So I'll quickly generate, uh, quickly create a simple report to demonstrate the inline feature. Opening a new report, defining the data set. So I'll select the connection, define a query, and call it product line sale, selecting the table. So I want products and order fact, deselecting the columns, joining by product code. So I'll join in the product code. I'm selecting product line from product. Uh, 
adding it to the group by, adding it to order by, and then we'll display the total sales for each of the product lines. So I'll include an expression for total price. We'll include the sum. Okay. So here we have got the query for the report. Click OK. So we have the query for the report. I'll have a chart. And a sub report and an inline sub report to display the details of the details from the details for the report. So I'll select the inline report. I want it next to my chart. I'll define the I'll select the query is already selected, so I can use this query for the for the chart. So I'll double click on the chart. I'll select the pie chart. The value I want to display is total sales and the field is product line. I'll give a name to the report. Total. Click OK. So we have the chart defined. Now we can define the sub report. So if you click on the sub report, we can define the query from the main report itself. So I'll select the query which I want, which is the product line. And I'll give a name to the sub report. So I'll call it sales data. It is the sub report. If you look at the data sets of the sub report, we can see that there is inherited data sets. So if you click on that, so this is a query that I had defined in the main report. So it will be inherited across to the sub report. I'm using the same query in both the main report and the sub report. So I select the fields which I want, including a band, selecting the layout for the band. I will display both product line and total sales in the band. Just including the labels. Call it product line. And call this one total sales. If you preview this report, it shows that it shows the data from the sub report. So we have the chart and the sub report data next to each other. So that is the advantage of the inline sub report. You can place the sub report wherever you want to position in the main report. And it takes up exact this much space in the main report. So that's a simple report we created. Right? Now I'll I've already created a report with a banded banded sub report feature, so just opening that. So it's the same query, but I've created using a banded sub report. So this is a chart and using the whole report header for, for displaying the chart. And I have defined the banded sub report in the report footer. So depending on the data, uh, it will take up the space. The banded sub report will take up the space. So if I preview this report, this is the chart. And in the next page, we have the sub report data. In the report footer, I've given a 
page break this row. So that's why the data is being displayed on the next page. So we have a page break this row, which is set to true. So the banded sub report in this report is taking the whole width of the of the report. So that is why I've created it as a banded sub report. Next we'll see about the page of pages function. So it's actually for including the page numbers in your report. If you have several sub reports, you may want to include page numbers in each page of the report, including the main and the sub report. So in the data, there is a function, if you click on add function, there is a page of page function in the common category function. So if you click on this, you can see page of pages and I've already selected that function in here and just add that to the page footer of the main report. If you preview the report, so it shows the first page, the second page, and third page. And the one thing to note is that we need to define the style expression for page footer as sticky. So you go to the page footer, the style. In the page behavior, there is a feature called sticky, you have to set it to true, only then the page numbers will pass from the main report to each of the sub report. If I have it, page footer, if I have it false and preview the report, so we have the page number in the first page, in the second page it's not displayed and in the third page it says three. So we need to note that we have to make the style expression sticky in the page footer for the page number to be carried across all the pages. Make it sticky again. Next, we can see about how to use, how to pass parameters from the main report to the sub-report. I've already created a report for that. So let's open it. If I preview the report, I have a prompt for selecting a particular customer. So I have a list of customers here, and I'm selecting one of the customer. For a particular customer selected, I have the contact person details and the order details of that particular customer. So if you look at the data set, data set, I have three queries defined. In a single page, you can define only one query, and only in sub-reports, you can define the next query. So data for the main report from customer data. I'm getting the details for sub reports from the order data query. In the main report, I have the customer data selected, and that's why I can display the details from this, this particular query. So for a particular customer selected, the contact person details are displayed from customer data, and the order details are displayed from the order data query. And I'm establishing a relation between these two queries, queries by use of the customer number. So I have a, para, uh, a query for defining the parameter, which is called the param query. So if I click on that, I'm just selecting the customer number and customer name. So that is my parameter query. So this is the customer query, and I'm getting the parameter custom param in here, and in the orders data also I have the same parameter defined. So the value we select here will come into this particular parameter defined in here, and it will get the data for those 
for that particular value selected. If I click on next one, the contact details for that one, and yeah, and how I have defined the parameters. So this is the main report, and I've just added a parameter. If you look at the parameter, so this is the name of the parameter. Label this please select the customer here, and display type is drop down. And that's why we are seeing the drop down list here. The value I'm using for the parameter is customer number, and how I want to display it is customer name. So that is why we are seeing the customer name, even though the parameter being used is the customer number. So this parameter, which is defined in the main report, has to be passed to the sub report. So if we go to the sub report, there is an import and export parameter. So edit sub report parameter. So this is the parameter I'm getting from the main report, and I'm passing it to the sub report. They both have the same name. And in the sub report, we have the orders data selected for the query. So that is it about passing parameters from main report to sub report. Another a good tip for development purpose of report is to have a common added in the report footer usually for every other development tool we we do put comments in the development notes or somewhere so in the report designer how we can put the comments in the report so in this case in the report footer i've created a band and i have set it as invisible here so this practice can be followed across the develop followed um, across the development. So I've set that particular band as invisible. So I'll just make it visible so that I can see. Yeah. So this one, true. And I'm defining in here which are the parameters that are mandatory, which are optional, any development notes, what is what is this particular report doing. So if several people work on the same report, it will be very useful to have the comment put in the report so that they can immediately identify what the report is doing, what what are the mandatory things to for the report to work, any development, any additional development notes, etc. So it's a good practice to follow, to put comments in the report. And this could be a good technique to follow. So having a band and having different labels which um, ask for the preference and then making it invisible at the end of the uh, development. So if I preview it here, this could be seen. So we have to make it invisible always. So that's it for today.